<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. And it's great that we can start now because the transportation minister is here. He's, uh, roads were great. The roads were so great. I thought he'd be more streamlined with that mustache a uh, little lighter. But uh, no, it's, it's great that he's here, obviously, uh, to make this uh, very important announcement here in central Alberta. Obviously, the, the twinning of Highway 11 is one of the many projects that's part of Alberta's recovery plan that will get Albertans back to work. And this project will kickstart our local economy here in Sylvan Lake and central Alberta and will attract new investment to the region. Part of Alberta's recovery plan is focused on a sector strategy that will focus on agriculture, forestry, oil and gas and tourism. In agriculture alone, our recovery plan will create thousands of jobs for Albertans and aims to attract more than $1.4 billion in value added investment across the province. This strategy will directly benefit from infrastructure investments like today's and Sylvan Lake is also going to benefit because it is a tourism hotspot in central Alberta and we need to invest in infrastructure to support this thriving industry. And this infrastructure project does exactly that. Our government has a strategy to utilize this strategic infrastructure investment by doubling tourism spending in the province by 2030 to 20 billion dollars. And as, as most uh, Silver Lake residents know, the intersection at 781 and Highway 11 for more than eight years has caused significant strain on the town and the residents around Sylvan Lake. That is why in February of last year, I hosted a town hall to get direct in input from residents and people in the area about how we can improve this intersection. And that ranged from emergency service personnel having issues getting out of the city and going to respond to as first responders, to uh, teachers that were, lived south of town that were teaching at H.J. Cody that had to go miles around to make a loop every day that didn't have access to 50th Street to downtown Sylvan Lake. And other numerous residents shared their concerns about how it was unsafe and that the current intersection needed to change to help businesses in downtown Sylvan Lake. So again, I would like to thank the Minister McIver for making this serious issue a priority and including it in Alberta's recovery plan. And I look forward to the start of this project and know that this will serve our community well. And it is now my privilege to invite Premier Kenny to the podium to provide his input and remarks on today's announcement. Thank you. Well, Devin, a couple of things. First of all, I think you just scooped me on the announcement. That's a career limiting move. And secondly, you didn't actually do your job, which is to recognize all of the dignitaries here. So. Uh, Bad start to the day, Devin. Anyway, I'm going to uh, recognize we got, I think, all of these folks. Um, there might be others who came that we didn't uh, get a list of, but I want to acknowledge from the town of uh, Rocky Mountain House, Mayor Tammy Burke and Councillor Len Phillips, and I saw a bunch of other councillors. Welcome from Rocky, from Clearwater County. We've got Reeve uh, Tim Hoven and Councillor Jim Duncan, Councillor Daryl Lougheed and Councillor Teresa Lang. And from uh, Eckville, of course, to, of course, Mayor's, uh, Alberta's mightiest mayor, H Helen Posty. Great, great to see you, Helen, a fellow Sasky originally, right? Um, and we've got uh, from Lacombe County, Reeve uh, Paula Law and Councillor Dana Crail and County of Red Deer, Mayor uh, Jim Wood. Where are you, Jim? Uh, you're missing your cowboy hat today. I couldn't pick you out. <laughs> and Councillor Richard Lorenz, and I, I, I thought there were some other councillors as well. From town of Sylvan Lake, we got Mayor Sean McIntyre, Councillor Megan Hansen, Councillor Jazz Payne, Councillor Kendall Kloss, and I should have actually, I just violated protocol, I should have started with our federal representative who knows the uh, MC, Earl Dresden MP. Great to see you to my former colleague and to all the folks from the Chambers of Commerce and Economic Development and everyone else for being here for an exciting announcement. Great to be joined as well by uh, Minister uh, Nixon, the gentle giant of our cabinet, who's also doing a great job as the House Leader in Alberta's government this spring, getting 34 bills passed when most other legislatures are shut down. This guy just doesn't have a stop button. And Minister of Transportation, Rick McIver, who uh, was maybe a few minutes late because he just had his, uh, well, he just became a grandfather, I should say, for the third time. And uh, what Devin was referring to, if you don't know, is on Canada Day, Rick shaved off his uh, 50 year old mustache for the first time and raised four hundred thousand dollars for kids cancer care in the process so give him a hand unfortunately he's letting it grow back <laughs> are you for or against that helen uh, okay all right there you go well this is uh, really one of the best parts of my job getting out of the office uh, 
getting out of uh, from under the dome, as Ralph used to say, and visiting folks in communities like Sylvan Lake and uh, Delburn and Innisfail, where I'm headed later today. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the South Country touring places like Tabor, Oyen, and Drumheller in a rented RV. Like a lot of Albertans this summer, I'm enjoying a staycation. And uh, apparently a lot of people are in Sylvan on the weekends too. Uh, there are so many great things to see and do right here at home, including in this beautiful and I think underappreciated part of our province. Many Albertans know about Sylvan Lake's amazing beaches. As I said, perhaps a few too many in this time of COVID as we saw last weekend. And I know the mayor's got that under control. But that's a really just the start of the amazing Thompson Highway experience. The drive from here to Saskatchewan River Crossing passes through some of our province's most beautiful wilderness and most interesting history, as Nixon never ceases to remind me. You can relive David Thompson's explorations at the Rocky Mountain House Museum and National Historic Site, and in the thrilling uh, Brearley and Devil's Elbow Rapids of the North Saskatchewan River if you're really adventurous. And I love the freedom that allows camping, random camping on the side of the road, one of the few remaining places in Canada where you can do that as long as you follow the sensible advice of the Clearwater County Sasquatch, right? <laughs> the company Coal Town, named after the German Jewish pioneering entrepreneur Martin Nordeg, is another piece of fascinating history. And Abraham Lake stretching back 20 miles on the Kootenai Plains behind the Bighorn Dam is surely one of the visually spectacular landscapes in all of Canada. The West Country is also blessed with plenty of rich farm and pasture land and a treasure trove of natural resources, including timber, coal, oil, and gas. As the folks here at uh, Foothills Energy Services can attest, these primary industries, including resource exploration and development, are hugely important to the economy in, these, in this area, as is the growing tourism sector. There's an, there is enormous potential to expand all these economic drivers, and the David Thompson Highway is the backbone to support that investment, to create those future jobs, and to generate that growth uh, that will come along with it. And that is why I am very pleased to announce on behalf of the government of Alberta that we are investing $120 million to twin the 66 kilometer section of the David Thompson Highway between Sylvan Lake and Rocky Mountain House. Finally, we're getting her done. This project, part of the $10 billion devoted to infrastructure in, and construction in Alberta's recovery plan, is expected to create nearly 600 direct and indirect jobs. Planning and design work starts immediately, and I already, some of the mayors are already uh, lobbying me on interchanges and stuff like that. So there'll be an opportunity uh, to talk to Minister McIver's folks about that in the next couple months. And they will be, uh, construction will start next year using a sectional uh, phased approach over the time to come. When complete, the nearly 6,000 vehicles that currently travel this stretch of the highway uh, every day will get to their destinations faster and more safely. And that includes Foothill Energy Services trucks and other big rigs that are on the road at night uh, and in all kinds of weather. And the convoys of tourists in RVs heading in and out of the mountains, uh, visiting established and future recreational, cultural and commercial amenities along the way that will inevitably be built to meet the growing demand. And Minister of Environment and Parks Nixon tells me there has been a lot of uh, tourism and camping traffic in the West Country this summer. You know, there's a great line from a movie and a novel, if you build it, they will come. Well, we are building it and they will continue to come in larger numbers. Because of today's announcement and of everything we're building as part of Alberta's bold, ambitious recovery plan, a plan uh, to build, to diversify and to create jobs. The roads, bridges, water projects, pipelines, schools, hospitals, seniors care facilities, tourism infrastructure, addiction recovery centers, and much more that we're building are, are creating badly needed jobs for today, but they're also important to building the architecture of the future. We estimate that our Build Alberta program as part of our recovery strategy is going to create 50,000 jobs alone. And we need those jobs right now. They'll su uh, this infrastructure will support diversification of our economy in agriculture, forestry, tourism, technology and innovation, aviation, finance and fintech and the creative industries. 
The last four months have been very tough, to say the least. At the start of this year, Alberta was finally getting our, our mojo back economically uh, after years of stagnation. Mostly due, that stagnation mostly due to bad policy decisions imposed on governments trying to shut down our resource industries. But then the pandemic hit, paralyzing the global economy and crashing oil prices uh, to the lowest level in history, meaning we got hit twice as hard as other places. But we should be proud of how Albertans have responded to the COVID challenge. Our pandemic response, combined with tremendous effort and sacrifice by all Albertans, kept the virus in check here with infection, hospitalization and death rates lower than in any major Canadian province, anywhere across the United States and anywhere in Europe. And we did it without having to lock down anywhere near as much of our economy and, and lives as they did elsewhere. 85% of businesses were able to continue to operate in Alberta safely during uh, the height of the pandemic. And let me pause to say, great credit goes to a proud daughter of the Sylvan Lake area, Dr. Dina Hinshaw, for her brilliant advice and hard work over the past four months. So now more than two months into our relaunch, Alberta Health is continuing to do a good job testing pe more people per capita than any other province, tracing and tracking those cases so we can contain them. And now as expected, with the lifting of restrictions, we're seeing a modest rise in cases amongst younger people in particular. But so it's always a reminder for everybody to be careful to protect the most vulnerable. Uh, our rates of hospitalizations, ICU admissions and deaths uh, remain low and stable. The cost of fighting COVID and its economic impact so far has been, for Alberta, about $14 billion. And we're going to be facing some very hard fiscal decisions in the years to come. But with our unemployment rate still north of 15%, our focus, the focus of Alberta's government, has to be on getting Alberta back to work, including uh, building the infrastructure that will pave the way for our future. And that's why today's announcement about twinning uh, the David Thompson Highway is all about, and I want to thank everyone who made it happen. I want to thank the, the mayor's councillors, Reeves, uh, and, and, and community members who have put this project forward, have been so patient uh, uh, for this day to come. And uh, with that, thank you very much. And now let's hear from the man, the $400,000 man, who's going to make this happen. We're going to make sure he gets it done on time, on budget, and on schedule. Minister of Transportation, Rick McIver. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, Premier. Thanks everybody for being here. Uh, MP Dreshin, Minister Dreshin. I just wanted to say that together. <laughs> Minister Nixon, mayors, councillors, and uh, Albertans, because this is who we're doing this for. I want you to know I was late this morning because I took a shortcut. I got off Highway 2, took 54 over to the 781, and guess what was there? A construction project. <laughs> so who was to blame? Me. So uh, anyways, the port project. important thing is we slowed down waited uh, to get by uh, to keep the men and women on the highway safely and uh, of course we'll look forward to everybody else's patience uh, when we build this project here today because there will be a few days that we're all going to have to build a couple more minutes into our schedule and i thank you for that it's been a, in some ways it's been a tough year with the collapse of energy prices global pandemic and challenges like no other time in alberta history we're down but albertans are never out uh, albertans are responding to this double whammy with determination and resilience taking nation-leading action to flatten the curb and keep the, keep the vulnerable safe. The economic toll of the pandemic combined with the oil price collapse and uh, is significant. So our province needs a forward, think, uh, forward-thinking strategy to get our economy moving and uh, plan for our future. So uh, last month, we launched our province's economic recovery plan to get Albertans back to work. As the Premier said, more than $10 billion in infrastructure spending includes 6.9 billion that were in the budget, 980 million in accept, accelerated capital spending for capital maintenance renewal. And for me, that means potholes. Anybody here hate potholes? Everybody's hands should be up right now. $200 million for the strategic transportation initiative, which uh, builds local uh, road and bridge and uh, water treatment and uh, wastewater treatment projects. 
uh, 600 million in strategic uh, initiative projects, 500 million for municipal infrastructure, and one and a half billion, of course, towards the Keystone XL. Remember the election jobs economy pipeline. I think I think we are, our government is actually trying to fulfill the very promises that we made when we got elected a year and a half ago. These practical and thoughtful projects will further diversify our economy by enabling key industries to grow and will pay dividends as smart investments in our future and our, our, towards our economy uh, recovery. At the same time, we are incentivizing job creators to set up in our province by ensuring we have the most competitive tax environment in Canada. I can't wait till uh, Premier and the rest of us put our selling shoes on and go across and say, if you don't put your head office here in, in Alberta, you're not doing your job right. And that's why we're here to announce a very important highway project, the twinning of the renowned David Thompson Highway between Sylvan Lake and Rocky Mountain House. Minister Nixon always gives me a heck when I call it Highway 11. He says, that's the David Thompson Highway. Hey, you, know, you know what? He's right. <laughs> Alberta is a truly beautiful place. Folks across our province spend time enjoying everything that we have to offer and thousands more travel from around the world, especially on warm weekends, to uh, enjoy the beautiful sights and sounds and uh, vistas that we have here. And, uh, and uh, David uh, Thompson Country offers a wealth of recreation opportunities. So whether it's camping at Crimson Lake, hiking through the Columbia Ice Fields, or taking a Sunday drive, as... Uh, us Calgary folks are bound to do and I'd probably irritate some of you a little bit uh, in this area when we're uh, we make it harder to get from point A to B and we're grateful for your patience and that's why we're excited to be announcing this twinning today it does three things it improves safety which is our number one priority in transportation it supports our platform commitment to help build our tourism industry by significantly improving that access to this country that you know is beautiful because you live here. And lastly, it ensures the local industry like Foothills Energy and all other businesses around here can get goods and commodities in and out and uh, people can get uh, just with their lives kind of a higher quality of life by having uh, better transportation to and fro. So we have to look forward to the start of the process of rebuilding our economy and getting people back to work. As the Premier said, our recovery plan is the largest infrastructure program in uh, Alberta's history. Uh, it will create about 50,000 jobs and more in the future because of the, uh, uh, the infrastructure that we're, create, we're creating. So the projects lay the foundation for recovery, thousands of well-paying jobs and many spin-offs for Albertans. And the projects will make our communities more attractive to businesses while looking to relocate and draw more investors for short and long-term jobs. So the road to recovery might be a bumpy one, but it's one that Albertans will ch take on and we will succeed. We have the determination to do that no matter what else comes our way. Our recovery plan builds on Albertans' entrepreneurial spirit by making practical investments that not only benefit in the short term, but will be around 20 and 30 years from now, so our kids and grandkids will also benefit uh, and for their careers, their jobs, and their quality of life, because that's really what it's all about. So twinning the David Thompson Highway shares in what Alberta has to offer. And uh, it, I'm excited about it. I, ho I, know, I hope you're excited about it. And now I'd like to introduce someone that we all can agree we look up to, who I believe is excited about it. My uh, good friend and colleague and an amazing leader of us in the Legislative Assembly, Minister Jason Nixon. How's how, the mic worked? I was worried because I have different uh, mic phone, microphone requirements than my colleagues <laughs> here in Edmonton. First of all, welcome to Central Alberta uh, to, to my colleagues who have traveled down here to our home. Uh, we do come from the best spot in this entire province. I never uh, hesitate to remind everybody of that. Uh, Minister McIver, Minister Dreeshen, the Premier and I have been in, locked up in Edmonton because we are the only legislature sitting in the, the country and the only legislature still doing legislative work on behalf of Albertans. We're proud of that, but that means we've been locked up in rooms uh, with politicians for the last several weeks. So I have to say right off the bat, it's good to be out of there and out in West Central Alberta with normal people for a change uh, to be able to make this great announcement. Now, I would be remiss, though, if I opened my remarks today about the David Thompson Highway without first mentioning the man himself, a gifted surveyor, a fur trader, a true pioneer. He was known as the stargazer by many First Nations in this area uh, that he met in his travels along the way. He is considered by many to be the greatest land surveyor ever to live, and his efforts founded many of the communities that I have the privilege of representing along this highway. 
Well, times have certainly changed since David Thompson first mapped this area. The highway covers much of the area he originally traveled more than 200 years ago. These upgrades to this important highway, highway will mean much to our communities and the tourism and resource industries that sustain them. The twinning of the David Thompson Highway will allow visitors to access, access our remarkable and beautiful backyard more easily and safely for generations to come. As anyone who lives in this area uh, can tell you, we've seen the number of tourists and locals recreating in this region exploding over recent years. So anything we can do to enhance the ability to access these tourism hotspots is welcome. As you've heard, this project will also create jobs, nearly 600 of them, for our communities, many of which, many of which have had a rough ride over the past few years. And the prospect of jobs in tourism for the region and better support for our resource industries, and this is a win-win for Albertans and the critical corridor between Rocky and Sylvan Lake. Notice I went Rocky to Sylvan Lake. I want the record to show that as well as the communities of Eckville, Benalto, Leslieville, Condor, and Clearwater County, Lacombe County, and Red Deer County, and many other communities in between. As Premier Kenny mentioned, this is one of a suite of infrastructure projects we're targeting to get Albertans back to work, to pave the way, no pun intended, for the province's economic recovery. I want to extend my sincere thanks to my friend and colleague, the Honourable Rick McIver, Alberta's Minister of Transportation, for recognizing this, the importance of this project, the importance of this project to our communities, and ensuring that it gets off the ground quickly so we can get people back to work. Thank you very much to all of you for being here, and now I would like to turn things over to His Worship, Mayor Sean McIntyre, the Mayor of Sylvan Lake. <clears throat> There we go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sean McIntyre, and I'm the happy mayor of the beautiful town of Sylvan Lake, which you can see a little bit better now that I've been able to remove my mask. Uh, I want to thank Premier Kenny, our MLA, uh, Minister Dreeshen, Minister McIver, Minister Nixon, and everyone involved in making this announcement possible. I want to thank as well all of my regional colleagues who were able to attend here today. It's always great to celebrate with the neighbors. Uh, next, I want to acknowledge my council colleagues here in attendance. We've got Councillor Megan Hansen, Councillor Teresa Rilling, Councillor Jazz Payne, Councillor Kendall Kloss, Councillor Tim Mearns, who's away at work today, Councillor Graham Parsons, and our Chief Administrative Officer, Wally Ferris. In our growing community of Sylvan Lake, we see the province's investment in infrastructure needed to move our residents, industry, and visitors into and throughout our region as strategic and welcome. The flow of goods and services and people are vital to a successful economy. And we've experienced what the twinning of Highway 11 from Red Deer to Sylvan Lake did for our community in terms of improved accessibility, safety, and increased opportunities. The twinning of Highway 11 from Sylvan Lake to Rocky Mountain House is yet another step in our province's continued growth as a leader in the development of communities, industry, and tourism. So I'll keep my comments brief and say that as mayor and on behalf of council for the beautiful town of Sylvan Lake, I want to thank the government of Alberta for your investment, for your vision, and for your follow through on this plan to twin Highway 11 from Sylvan Lake to Rocky Mountain House. And it's an exciting time for us, something that we've been looking forward to, and it'll mean a positive impact for our region and beyond. Thank you very much. Well, good morning. I'm Mayor Tammy Burke from Rocky Mountain House. <laughs> and I'm pleased to be here to represent the town of Rocky Mountain House. I'd first like to start out by saying thank you to Premier Kenny, uh, Minister Nixon, Minister McIver, Minister Dreeshen, and indeed all Albertans for investing in our future for our communities. I'd also like to acknowledge all of our regional partners, Mayor Sean McIntyre, and I'd also like to point out my council that is here, Councillor Marin Fraser, Councillor Michelle Narang, Councillor Len Phillips, and Councillor Dave Ald. The twinning of Highway 11 between Sylvan Lake and Rocky Mountain House will bring enormous change to our community, starting with safety and ending with economic growth. This is great news for our future. First and foremost, the safety of our traveling public. It will mean a safer commute for our youth who will be able to stay in their home community and travel to Red Deer College for their studies. 
It will mean safer, more efficient travel for energy and transportation services that conduct their energy or essential business from David Thompson and Highway 22 corridors. It will make for a more direct, enjoyable drive for tourists and visitors alike. Traffic to our area has only increased this spring and summer as Albertans choose to vacation in our own province. We know that these visitors, once they see what, they are, what our incredible town and region have to offer, will be back. And we can't wait to welcome all of you to David Thompson Country via the new divided highway. Transportation drives local economies. Residents' quality of life, employee recruitment, product movement, movement and tourism all rely on safe roads and infrastructure. The Rocky Chamber of Commerce supports better highway access to Rocky Mountain House and businesses are eager to see the benefit of 580 jobs resulting business growth. I know the construction phase will take time and may disrupt our current routine, but these are temporary inconveniences for a brighter future. And I'd like to end by saying, as you embark on your journey to Clearwater County, David Thompson Country, I'd like you to also remember to stop in Rocky Mountain House. It's where adventure begins. Thank you. Our illustrious speakers now have a few moments to take some questions from media. So when you're asking questions, once called upon, if you could just state your name, outlet, and limit yourself to a question and a follow-up. So. Raise your hand, whoever wants to ask the first question. Oh yeah, there's a microphone just on your right, your left side, if you'd like to go ask questions there. <laughs> He's doing double duty. Sure. Oh, I see you, okay. I just noted that the mayors were a lot more succinct than the provincial folks, so <laughs> let's talk more action from the municipal leaders for sure. Uh, Good morning, Evan Klippenstein from CTV in Edmonton. Uh, yesterday, the federal government announced $19 billion for provinces and territories. What does this mean for Alberta? Is it enough? And how do you plan to distribute it to municipalities? Well, we appreciate the federal uh, package of support for uh, the COVID crisis. Uh, we've spent weeks negotiating that with the federal government, uh, and it, it should be in the range of $2 billion for Alberta. We'll be working in the weeks to come, or the days to come, with our municipalities to see that uh, both the operational and transit support in that package flows to Alberta municipalities. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's right that that package should happen because after all, Albertans contribute $20 billion net to the rest of their country through our federal taxes. So now we're just getting a little bit back of what we send to Ottawa. So it's only right that we should get a bit of that back and uh, we will ensure that that money is spent uh, effectively and efficiently uh, both to support our municipalities during the crisis, but also uh, Albertans and our public health. Some of the funding will recognize the enormous amount of money Alberta has spent on personal protective equipment. We've led the country on that, on testing, uh, and uh, in, in, uh, in areas like uh, sick pay for workers who need to stay home if they're not feeling well. So uh, we're waiting, we'll be working out the details uh, with the feds. Uh, it is a positive announcement, but as I say, at the end of the day, this is money paid by Alberta taxpayers coming back to Alberta at a time of crisis when it is much needed. Do you have a follow-up? Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, Troy Gillard, RD News Now. This would probably be for Mayor McIntyre and for Transportation Minister McIver. Uh, it was touched on about the intersection over here at 781 being a key part of this project. Sean, um, what would the town of Sylvan Lake like to see done at that intersection and how important is it for improvements to be made there? And Minister, can you talk about where it fits in the overall scope of this project? Well, thank you. We're very much looking forward to the improvement at uh, 781 as it is a key entry point to Sylvan Lake. Uh, we understand it will help our business community. It will help the residents of Clearwater County and Red Deer County and Lacombe County access our community through that uh, through fair as well. As far as the design of the intersection, we're looking forward to the engineering on that. Obviously, we want to have a great flow and great safety, but really, we're just happy to see action on that item and looking forward to using it. Thank you. Well, well thank you. Listen, uh, both the mayor and uh, Minister Adrian have been relentless in reminding us that they want that uh, that intersection improved. Uh, in fact, uh, 
I never really, I don't think I ever meet Minister Dreshin without hearing about it. So, so we're happy to get this done. We know it's important to the people of Sylvan Lake, and, and in fact, we also know it's long-standing. So I won't say they've been patient, but I will, I will say that uh, we agree with them. Uh, which is why it's part of this this project. We think it'll make a positive difference for the day-to-day -day quality of life for Sylvan Lake, and uh, the downtown uh, businesses uh, have made it known that they believe it'll uh, it'll help the uh, their businesses too, which of course helps them to to stay in business and hire more Albertans, and and all of those things matter. So we're we're just happy to be a part of what we think is a positive change. Next question. Kaylin Webbs, Sylvan Lake News. My question is for Transportation Minister McIver. Um, last year we were told that the frost heaves on the westbound lane of Highway 11 coming in from Red Deer were fixed, but we're still seeing quite a bit of complaints with them. Is there a plan to kind of correct those again? Uh, we are looking at that currently. You, uh, There was work done last year, which is why we thought it was fixed, but uh, the people that actually live the area and drive the road have, uh, have uh, rendered a different opinion. And uh, one of the, you know, we actually have very good people in transportation. So I, and I have great confidence in all of our staff, but uh, the other great source of information we have is Albertans who, uh, if you drive a road every day, you are an expert on that road. Uh, and we try to take that advice we get seriously. So we are looking at uh, making improvements in the future uh, based on the frost heaves that you, uh, we agree with those complaints and, and we are looking at what we have to do to make that better. Perfect, thank you. Should I go follow up? No. Any other questions? Hi, Brian Brownlee. I'm a business owner along Highway 11 at Eckville. I'm just curious if there's still a look to the house pass uh, down the road, or is that project uh, dead? Thank you for that. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, Minister Nixon, who never lets me forget about that potential <laughs> project in the future. Uh, you know what? We uh, There's no... No, nothing in the budget currently now or, or, or that I know of in the future, but uh, we, uh, we have taken a look at it. Uh, to date, uh, our colleagues in British Columbia have, uh, don't think it's uh, a priority of theirs, uh, but we will continue to uh, look at it and consider it amongst all our other budget priorities. Uh, Minister Nixon has certainly made it clear to me that it's something he'd like to see, and, and I've heard from uh, people in this area uh, you know, through through the transportation uh, office, that uh, that they'd like to see that in the future too. So, it's uh, I it's it's not in the budget. There's no plans, but we haven't written it off either. It's not a great answer, but it's what I it's the best I can give you today. Okay, if there are no.